Hi guys, this is Miss Anderson, and this is video number two in our third lesson, which is titled Avoiding Awkward Sentences. And this is in our proofreading writing workshop where we are learning uh, how to revise and edit our writing. This is step number three in the writing process, which is called revising or revision. And that's what we are doing. And so remember, this is video number two. So if you have not watched the first video in avoiding awkward sentences, then go back and watch that video first and then come back to this video, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. And so in the packet, we left off on page 37 and we stopped at, uh, we are going to start at, I should say, uh, short and choppy sentences, okay? And so just to refresh your memory, we are revising our writing to make it clear and concise. And so these are the things that we are looking for in our writing, okay? And so we talked about vocabulary. Uh, we talked about redundant words or words that are in twice that don't have to be. We also talked about words that have no meaning. They should not be there. And so we talked about qualifiers as well. So your writing doesn't need qualifiers, all right? So now we're going to talk about your writing having short and choppy sentences and what that looks like, okay? All right, here we go. Sorry about that. Short sentences have their purpose. They tend to be clear and direct. A series of short sentences, however, can make the writing feel choppy and monotonous. There are many methods to revise short, choppy sentences, such as combining sentences or using verbal phrases. Verbal phrases are formed when verbs, but act like nouns, adjectives, or adverbs in a sentence. And so this packet is going to briefly cover um, those verbal phrases. And so if you're in high school, verbal phrases was learned in the eighth grade, okay? And so a lot of times students don't really get a good grasp on it or they didn't learn it at all, okay? So we're just going to do a review, okay? And then I'm going to show you where there's a great link, um, Khan Academy. I'm going to pull it up on YouTube at the end of this video and show you where you can actually learn more about what we call verbal phrases. So right here, verbal phrases, all right? So those, where's my highlighting too, okay? Those you want to, you really want to focus on learning vo verbal phrases because they help your writing a lot, okay? More than I can express to you. But let's go ahead and get busy, okay? So verbal phrases, they are verbs. They start as a verb, but when you add things to them, you can change them to be nouns, they can be adjectives, or they can be adverbs in a sentence. So they can do two jobs. They can do the job of a verb, but then when you uh, change them, they can do the job of another part of speech in a sentence. Um, they are participial phrases, gerund phrases, infinitive phrases, and appositives. So those are the, the types of uh, verbal phrases, okay? Participial, gerund, infinitives, and a, part, and a positive. So say that with me. Participial phrases, gerund phrases, infinitive phrases, and a positive. And so that's what the next page is going to briefly, briefly cover. It's not going to give you, this is not intended to be a full lesson, okay? Let me let the bell go. It's not intended to be a full lesson, okay? So you will have to go out and do some independent study on learning those uh, verbal phrases, okay? All right, but let's go ahead and get started, all right? Participles and participial phrases. A participle is a verb form that can be used as an adjective. And a participial phrase is a phrase that contains a participle and any modifiers. Modifiers are any words that changes, okay? For example, when you change the verb develop to developing, to describe something, you have created a participle. So you took a verb, okay? Remember, all verb phrases starts with a verb. Then you added ing. Now you created a participle. 
add a modifier so that ing we call that a modifier because that's what it's doing it's changing a word adding modifiers to developing gives you a participial phrase all right let's look at an example here okay because you may uh oh how do i undo, undo that you may or you may not have understood what i just said okay so let's let's look at an example Developing off the coast of Haiti, a tropical storm brought rain and high winds to the West Indies. The, the participial phrase developing off the coast of Haiti describes the tropical storm. So see how it's, it's set off by a comma, okay? This whole phrase is describing this, this storm, okay? Developing off of the coast of Haiti a tropical storm and that's how we know it's a phrase because it can't stand alone okay we learned about the phrases and clauses we learned the difference and a phrase is a group of words that is not a sentence meaning it doesn't have a um a subject and a predicate okay so if we were to take this off we would still have a complete sentence for example a tropical storm brought rain and high winds to the West Indies. So that's still a sentence, okay? But then we add on this participial phrase in order to describe this storm. The participial phrase developing off the coast of Haiti describes the tropical storm. All right, let's look at another example. We saw Lance Armstrong receiving the yellow jersey after the first mountain stage of the Tour de France, okay? So now, if you you may not know who Lance Armstrong is, but he's a very famous bicyclist, and the Tour de France is like their 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 Super Bowl, their World Series, so to speak, okay? Tour de France, okay? So Lance Armstrong was this really, really famous bicyclist, okay? And so you know to ride a bicycle up a mountain has got to be awesome, okay? All right. The participial phrase, receiving the yellow jersey, describes Lance Armstrong, okay? We saw Lance Armstrong receiving the yellow jersey after the first mountain stage of the Tour de France. Participial phrases can transform short, choppy sentences by adding description and details, okay? So you have to kind of start slow with participial phrases, all right? but see if you can add one or two, okay? Don't try to fill your writing up, but see if you can add a modifier that's describing a noun by adding a participial phrase, okay? Just try it and see if you can do that, okay? All right, so the next type of verbal is called a gerund, and we call those gerund phrases, gerund. Gerund phrases can also bring variety to your sentences. A gerund is a verb ending in ing that serves as a noun. So now think back to that participial, okay, and participle phrases. When we added ing, we added ing just like we're doing with a gerund, but what part of speech did it change for the participial? Well, if you said an adjective, then you are correct. So when we added ing, to a verb and we're using it as a um, adjective, then it is a participial phrase. Now, if we're adding ing to a verb and we are wanting to use that as a noun in a sentence, now we have a gerund, okay? It's, it's, it's a little high level, okay? But once you get it, you got it, okay? So just take a moment to get it, okay? All right, so let's look at this example. Running is a good way to stay in shape. So running in this sentence is being used as a noun. Running is formed from the verb run and is used as a noun in this sentence, okay? So we have gerunds and participial phrases. Example, until I revise many times, I am not happy with my writing. So writing is formed from the verb to write and is used as a noun in this sentence, okay? So writing is not being used as a verb, it is being used as a noun. I am not happy with my writing, which is a physical piece of paper or either on your notepad or something, it's a theme, okay? 
Gerund phrases occur when a gerund is combined with modifiers, okay? Example, working on the shrimp boat was a good summer job. The phrase working on the shrimp boat serves as a noun in this sentence, okay? So a group of words can be a noun, okay? Working on the shrimp boat, that whole phrase is a noun. It's a gerund phrase, okay? Was a good summer job. Was is the predicate, and then the rest of the sentence is a good summer job, okay? Let's look at another example. My brother enjoys skiing at Crystal Mountain. The phrase skiing at Crystal Mountain serves as a noun in the sentence, okay? Skiing at Crystal Mountain. That whole thing is a place, okay? So it's a noun. You get it? It's actually kind of cool. I love verbals. Verbals are, well, you know, I love English. I love words. I love things that we can do with language. So it doesn't take much to please me. But let's keep going, okay? Infinitives. And so the way I remember infinitives is the old Toy Story movie with Buzz Lightyear saying, to infinity and beyond. So anytime. So that's how I remember infinitives, okay? And you'll see why in just a second. Infinitive phrases can also take the monotony out of your writing, okay? Meaning take the boring out of your writing. Monotony means something that is boring, an infinitive is a verb form composed of two plus the verb. So we make this, so this is different from a gerund, okay, or a participial, all right? Participial and, rate and gerunds, those are formed by adding ing. Infinitives, we add two to the verb, okay? So let's look at this. To walk, to speak, to cry, to leave, to eat, to go, to get. You go on and on and on. Any verb, you can put two in front of it and make it an infinitive, okay? These verbs are often part of a verb chain, but are not the main action of the verb in a sentence. And that's why they're infinitives, because they keep going and going and going. But they are not the action in a sentence, okay? Got to understand that. Let's look at this example. Fred tried to speak quickly. The main verb is try. That's the action in the sentence. What did Fred try to do? He tried to speak quickly. Okay? So there must be a way to get past the roadblock. So there must is the verb, is the action in the sentence. And to get past the roadblock, that is the infinitive. And do you understand why I like Buzz Lightyear? To infinity, to infinity, to infinity, to plus the verb. You got it? <laughs> the infinitive phrase to get past the roadblock completes the phrase must be a way. The main verb in a sentence is be. Okay, sorry, not must, but be. All right, guys, whatever. All right, so... Uh, let me go ahead and show you the website um, or the YouTube place that you can go. This I just loaded up the first video. Let me just go over here to YouTube, um, to the Khan Academy. So you go to YouTube, okay, Khan Academy, and just type in Jaren's. And I love this fellow, Michael Out, okay? Um, you'll know them when you see them because they're black. Okay, the videos are, they have a black background and they say Khan Academy, okay? Uh, I'm not sure why the Khan Academy for gerunds is not coming up. There's a positives. There are prepositional phrases. Mm, Khan Academy. I'm not sure why gerunds is not coming up, but let's see if infinitives will come up. Okay, scroll down. Phrases and clauses. So gerunds, let's see if verbals. Let's do that. Okay. Verbals, Khan Academy, introduction to verbs or positives. So when you click on this Khan Academy, you can go and see all of their videos that they have. 
Um, they have hundreds of videos and they have a grammar series. And as you can see, they have every other content. Um, but if you just type in Khan Academy Grammar, there it is, it will give you the block that has the 100 in there. Okay, there it is, 118. So if you click on that, I or you go over here to the side, I'm here to introduce you to grammar on there Khan it is. Academy. Welcome. I'm so glad you could join Then me. you can find so the jerks. Okay. So everything you want to know, I just gave you a nice little trick to find it. Everything about grammar, you can find it on Khan Academy. Okay. It even starts with the question, what is grammar? Okay. So if you're ever having a grammar problem, Khan Academy is your solution. Okay. All right. So let's go to a positives and a positive phrases. Okay. A positives add description and detail to your writing to make it clearer. And a positive is a noun or pronoun used to identify or explain another noun. Oh, wow. Okay, go ahead, a positive. For example, my cousin Alejandro can play the piano. So the noun Alejandro identifies the noun cousin so it is an a positive. So my cousin Alejandro. So we have Alejandro is a noun, okay? And it's identifying cousin, okay? My cousin, okay? So this is a pronoun. This is the noun of the sentence. It's my cousin that can play the piano. We just happen to know that his name is Alejandro. So that's an a positive, okay? A positives are also combined with modifiers to make a positive phrases, okay? For example, my grandmother, a talented cook, used to make an excellent pot roast. So the phrase, a talented cook, is used to describe the noun of my grandmother, okay? These are excellent little phrases to add to your writing, okay? But take it slow, all right? Don't, you don't, you don't. You'll get used to it as you do it more and more, but start off small, okay? All right, so we come to the exercises, okay? And so I'm just going to read the directions. You're going to pause the video and go and do the exercises, all right? Identify the italicized phrase, okay, in each of the following sentences as a participial phrase, a gerund phrase, um, an infinitive phrase or an a positive phrase and then write that on the line here. Okay, so let's do number one. Okay, edit, add text. Steve Largent, a former football player, is now a politician. Okay, so a former football player, all right, what is that doing? To me, okay, I would go out on a limb and I would say that that is an a positive phrase, okay, and a positive, okay, so I would say, so it says, write the type of phrase on the line um, below, a positive phrase, don't forget that it's a phrase because it's more than one word, so you can't put here just a positive, if you did, you would be incorrect, it's an a positive phrase, okay, all right, so I will let you go ahead and pause and do 12, 13 through 18. And then let's see what we have coming up next. Punctuation. Oh, our friend punctuation. Because actually, you never can stop learning about punctuation. We think it's something simple, but actually it's not. We'd be surprised how commas are misused. Periods are left off, forgotten, you know? So let's just keep punctuation in the front of our brains, okay? All right, here we go. Punctuating sentences correctly helps you avoid short and choppy sentences. Punctuation tells the reader how to read the sentence. So true, ladies and gentlemen, so, so true. If the reader cannot get all the way through a sentence without stopping to take a breath, then the sentence is too long. Yes. On the other hand, if the sentence has too many places to pause, it will feel choppy. Commas tell the reader to pause. So using commas correctly, I just said that, <laughs> and listening to the sound of your writing, 
reading it aloud will help you avoid creating choppy sentences, okay? All right, so what else do they have here? Oh, that's all, just <laughs> using comma. Okay, because the punctuation is in lessons 13, 14, and 15, okay? All right, so we haven't gotten that far, and so I'll help you. have to help you use uh, commas and stuff. But where else can you find comma uh, learning? Khan Academy. Yes, you can. They have one on commas, on every, every punctuate, dashes, ellipses. Oh, my goodness. Check out that Khan Academy, man. All right, so this video, this ends lesson three, okay? And so let's summarize here. In this lesson, you have learned to revise awkward sentences using brief and concise language. You have learned to edit unnecessary and redundant words from longer sentences and to use verbal phrases to revise short and choppy sentences. Awesome. So now you know how to make your writing clear and concise by taking out words that don't need to be there. And you've learned how to add words that can make your writing more descriptive and more detailed and more fun, okay? So now this has to be practiced, ladies and gentlemen. So you know what to do, okay? Now you have to practice doing it, okay? So when you write, when you try to add something to your essay, one of these phrases or something like that, make sure you get peer feedback, okay? Make sure you get feedback from any source to, to check to make sure that you're using it correctly, okay? Because these things will become habit forming and you want to make sure that you have good habits and not bad habits when it comes to your writing. Okay, guys, that is it. So I will see you on the next lesson, which is lesson four. And the title of that lesson is Creating Sentence Variety. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Have fun. Bye.